Hey, Barry, I'm just going to pretend this is media days, okay? <laughs> um, man, uh, I know everybody's been raving about Coates. I know Dorian's uh, probably sounds like he's having a good camp. What do you think of those two guys? And then how are the young guys doing behind them? How do you kind of feel about that rotation group? Bob, if this was media day, that would be a seven-part question. So you need to step up your game. I could add to it if you want me to. No, I don't. No, you know, the, the defensive line, and I, I am excited about the progress that they've made. Um, you know, I've had a couple of additions there with, with Coach Dorian Gerald, who didn't, you know, obviously didn't play last year because of an injury, has, has really made a, a, a lot of progress in the first few days. You know, we're, we look at it, we're only – this was a, really this practice number 11 today. Um, I feel like we've had a lot more, uh, but they, I think we've gotten a little bit better each day. And that, that's a, a sign of you know, the, the want to and the desire and the work uh, that the guys are putting in. Jonathan Marshall inside has done a heck of a job. Eric Gregory continues to get better, uh, but we're gonna need all those guys. And I hate to, you know, Isaiah Nichols, this, you know exactly what you're gonna get every day with Isaiah. Uh, he's gonna be assignment sound. He's gonna give great effort. Uh, we're asking them to do a lot, and we're putting a lot on their plate. You know, there, as we get closer to game one, we'll start, you know, taking some things out. But um, they've they've been able to uh, this kind of hang in there and keep. Uh, the more we pour on them, they've they've you know they've been able to get it and and then get out on the field and apply it. So uh, the thing with with that position is so important, especially in this league, to play good defense. You you better be good up front. If not, it's going to be a long day. So. You know, I'm, I'm leaning on those guys. Coach LeBlanc's done a, done a heck of a job getting them in position of where they are now, and we just got to keep keep pushing for the next couple of weeks. Alyssa? Hey, Coach, I'm curious about uh, your defensive backs, just how you feel they've been doing when they're covering the wide receivers, and then maybe specifically the guys like Jalen Catalan, Miles Slusher, your young guys, how they're doing. Yeah, I think we've we've had some days that have been really good, and we've also had some days of of growing pains. And you know, the sign of of good teams, we continue. We don't have ups and downs. We're we're consistent, but they're they're working extremely hard. I think, you know, the guys at the safety position, we're rolling again a number of guys in there because we we've got to prepare that way. And then also at the corner spot, you know, uh, Buster's had a really good camp so far. Uh, Jarquez continues to to improve. Um, you know, collectively, that group has got a chance if we'll continue to work and, and do the things that, that we're asking them to do. Uh, I think we've got enough skill there that, that we can mix in a, a lot of different coverages that'll, that'll help us out. And, and I've been in it long enough, the better your pass rush is, the better your pass defense is. So we're spending a lot of time with that uh, to try to help us out on the back end. Nate? Um, Barry, Sam hasn't had a whole lot of good things to say about the linebackers. Are you concerned about that position and kind of what are you looking for out of the scrimmage from them Friday? Well, you want, you know, those guys and, and you know, there's there's a number of guys that, that are in the mix that haven't had a lot of experience. So we've got to get them caught up. And, you know, that's that's a, a, a big question mark going into this next scrimmage on, on we need a couple of guys to, to separate themselves. And we also know at that position that, you know, we're not going to get through a season with this two guys. You know, we're going to have you know three and four that that are going to have the opportunity to play, and we got to get them game ready. And you know, that's that's on all of us uh, defensively as a, as a staff to get that done. So you know, every area. You know, I don't want to confuse it. We haven't arrived at any area. Uh, we got a lot of work to do, but we you know we're going to hope and, and look and try to get those guys in position on Saturday or Friday for, for that scrimmage that, that we, we come out of that one with, with more production did, than we did the first one. Howdy. Hey, Barry, I'm, just, I'm curious what your impressions have been of Xavier Kelly in camp, um, just what, what's standing out about him to this point. Yeah, he's, he's done a nice job. He's 315 pounds. He's got good power, plays with leverage, um, and, and he's got good quickness. You know, he's maybe a little bit quicker than I thought he would be, just his explosion at the point of, uh, point of attack, you know, in, in, inside. And we've been able to move him around a little bit because of his skill set. Uh, so really, really excited that we have him, and uh, he's going to have to play a lot of really good snaps for us this year. Tom. Yeah, Sam was telling us it's probably going to be uh, one more major scrimmage and then maybe sporadic tackling here and there, but, but that you felt you could teach tackling in the drill work. And I'm wondering how you feel like you guys stand 
from a being a good tackling team standpoint? I, I, I know we're making progress. Uh, that's one area that, um, you know, you've always got to continue to work on. And it's not just, you know, it's not just getting the um, – one-on-one -on -one tackle, the fundamental tackle. It's guys playing fast and playing together and playing with relentless effort and, you know, knowing where your leverage points are and where you have help and where you don't. Uh, we need to, you know, we need to tackle. We need to tackle well on Friday. You know, the, the simulation and individual drills, I think we've gotten a lot of reps and a lot of work at it, but there's really no substitute for, for doing it live action. So um, I'm anxious to see how we do on Friday. Um, and then we'll make adjustments from there uh, if we continue need to need to, you know, do more of that. We've done a lot for the first 11 days in, in our individual work. We've done a whole lot, but we'll continue that. And, you know, the, the thing with tackling, you know, the, it's eliminating explosive plays. They're going to get some plays, but find a way to get them down. And they break the, you know, the line of scrimmage in the second level with the back end. we got to get them down. And, you know, the, there's a number of trademarks on playing good defense, and, and one of them that's towards the top of the list is, is eliminate explosive plays. And it's okay if they catch a hitch, you know, for seven yards, get him down, don't let it go for 70. Hutch. Yeah, Coach, uh, Sam was telling us the other day that several of your <clears throat> defensive backs are, are kind of cross-training at multiple spots there in the secondary. Do you do that more this year with the circumstances around COVID, or do you do that a lot every year? I've, I've always done that. I think it's important that, you know, I don't ever want to label a guy just a corner, you know, or, or just to say, because there's so many sub packages that we have defensively, you know, we're going to line them up in a number of different roles. So I think it's important that they understand what the other four guys or, you know, three guys on the field that are doing, depending on what we have on the, on the field. Uh, so we've done, we've done a lot of that. I've done it my entire career. And, uh, you know, one thing I think is important that, you know, note, in, in this season, I think it's maybe more valuable than, than ever that a guy can play multiple positions. Hey, Biddy. Oh, that was kind of my question, but um, I, was, I, I am curious because uh, Coach Pittman was basically saying like half the secondary had worked at the nickel spot, and I was wondering how you see that position playing out. And is that a position that you work more with or does Sam work more with, Sam Carter? We're, yeah, that's a good good question. With, with that spot, there is a number of guys playing there. And, you know, Greg Brooks is, is really um, taking, taking that position and, and played well. And, I, you know, it's not the only spot that he's going to play. But a lot of it, trade depends on what we're getting personnel-wise on, on who we're going to put in that spot. Uh, down and distance, you know, some of that with, within the scheme – uh, will dictate how we want to rotate the coverage and some some things with that nature. But uh, again, it comes down to cross training, getting your best eleven on the field, and finding a way to do that. Uh, we're putting we're rolling a bunch of guys in that spot and and the two high safety spots. Uh, you know, it's a, almost an interchangeable position at times. Um, so they've got to cross train and continue to work, and they they've done a nice job. They get an understanding really. They've got an understanding of of the reason we're making the call. They get what we're trying to take away from the offense. And now, you know, the more reps that we can get, we can start to play fast. Ty. Barry, Sam told us yesterday that you guys have yet to start prepping for Georgia. Um, big news coming out of Athens today with J.B. Newman opting out. How, when you guys do start prepping for the Bulldogs, how will that change your game prep and particularly game planning for whoever's going to play quarterback there? Well, we've taken some time, you know, just on, on our own looking at, at uh, our first opponent. You know, obviously I've played them uh, the last four years, five years, went against them every year. Um, they've got a very talented roster, great coaches. Uh, we're going to have to really study that. You know, I just heard that, that news before I walked into the room. Uh, so, you know, that, that maybe changes the dynamics of, of who they are. I'm not sure. I haven't. I know personnel-wise what they have, and I know what I've gone up against the last few years, and and uh, been a very disciplined, tough uh, football team um, that attacks you in every area. And I know they've recruited extremely well, so uh, we'll get on that this weekend for sure, heavy, and uh, into next week, starting, you know, for us defensively at least, trying to get our thoughts on on maybe what gives us our best chance. Russell. Coach, what have you seen from Jerry Jacobs? He's had his name mentioned several times from players on the other side of the ball. Just wanted to get your thoughts. He's, he's a guy with some experience. You know, he, he's played. Um, he's played 
uh, a number of snaps. He's been a starter, not 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 in this league, but he's been a starter. So you show that shows up. You know, he's he's a savvy football player. He does have some physicalness to him, uh, and he's got short area quickness. So those things for him, he's been really able to rely on a lot of that. And I think Coach Carter's done a, a really nice job on on really expanding his skill set, and he's made him a, a more complete player. Um, you know, we we need him to. Uh, play again, both corner spots. He's going to try to help us out. You know, he's played some at the nickel spot. So, again, it's a guy that that we're we're fortunate we've got on our roster. He's worked hard. Uh, it's going to be a big part of what we're doing defensively. All right, quick round two, Tom. A uh, quick question on your safeties, uh, your two high safeties. So, Fouché has, has Miles Mason been in there with the ones, and who's probably in the two deep right now? Yeah, we rolled so many guys in. You know, Fouché's been in there, Catalan's been in, Mason's been in, Micah Smith, um, Slusher as a new guy. Again, a lot of it depends on you know what is the emphasis of the period that we're that we're in defensively. Uh, what's our package on? You know, sub package? Are we in base defense? Are we you know in a nickel front or or kind of how we're structuring that? So we've we've rotated a number of guys in that you know the the two deep so so to speak and. They also know they're a play away. If they're not going with the first group out there, they're a play away from being on the field. So we'll kind of narrow that down here in the next few days on if we actually put a, a, a real depth chart together, what that would look like. Uh, but right now we're trying to give as close to equal reps as we can because there's close competition. And I want to see how we, we continue to play and play together uh, through this next scrimmage. All right, let me know if you've got questions in the chat. Touch. Yeah, Barry, this is a little bit of a, a big picture question, but the last game you were a head coach, you were game planning for Arkansas. Now being here for nine or 10 months, whatever it's been, has there been any particular player or position group that you may have been surprised by now that you've got it to, to see him up close? Oh man, that think of all the things that have happened since whatever day that was last year, late November, uh, November, you know, we played the 29th, 30th uh, change happened. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that's happened in the world in there since then. So um, you look at, you know, the guy that going into the game last year, you know, we were, we were ultra on alert for wherever number 16 was lined up, you know, and, and now getting around him and watching him compete, I've got even more respect for him because number one, he's, he is, you know, he is uh, as talented as a guy as I've, I've gone against. And he also, he works so hard, extremely hard every day. You're going to get his best every single day. And uh, my respect factor has, uh, you know, I know he was a good player last year, game planning, but now uh, seeing him live and, and up close and in person every day, I've got a lot of respect for the kid. Bob? Uh, Barry, I have kind of a big picture SEC question, but, you know, you, you look at the league coaches, whether it's head coaches, coordinators like yourself, and it seems like guys are always moving around the league. They, they don't leave very often. I know the SEC is a great league and it pays real well. Uh, what do you think about, you know, the SEC and the familiarity with everybody? And was it important to you to stay in the SEC? I'm sure you had a lot of offers. Well, you look at the league, and I think it's undeniable. It's the, it's the best football conference in, in America. And, uh, you know, you're a competitor, you want to be a part of that. And that, you know, it's something with the, 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 the fan base, the geographic area of the country, the ability to recruit, um, you know, the support you receive from, from the administration. And then, you know, this was such a great fit for me because of uh, my trust and, and belief in Sam Pittman. And uh, so there's a number of factors that went into uh, me having the opportunity to be here. I'm fortunate and honored to be here and, and represent the University of Arkansas and uh, look forward to building this thing and, and excited uh, a lot more now than I was the day I took the job. And we've got a lot of work ahead of us, but I'm, but I'm excited to do it every day. Last one, Trey Biddy. Hey, Coach, I wanted to ask you about just the players and their buy-in with you guys. Are you, are you feeling that? I, I'm, last year, you know, it, it, there was a sense that that wasn't happening with the players. Are they buying into what you guys are, are selling right now? Well, I think so, Trey. You look at the things that we put out in front of them and then the way that they've attacked it. Now, also, you know, everything hasn't been 
sunshine and rainbows. It never is. But also, Coach Pittman has done such an amazing job on laying out the plan and just being honest and transparent and showing them this is the way that we're going to do things. This is our program. Um, giving them the roadmap of, of what it looks like. And we also understand there's going to be some adversity. How do we respond? How close can we get uh, before this first game happens? Because there, there's going to be adversity in that first game. How are we going to respond from it? You know, what are we going to do, uh, you know, when, when things don't go your way? There, all those things, that's never a, you, know, you put a check mark by, yeah, we've, we've arrived, we've done that. It's an ongoing process. But I know the, the, the way that practices are structured, if, you know, the way that Coach Pittman has brought this plan into, into reality, you know, if you go out there and you're not really in and two feet in, you're going to get exposed really quickly. And uh, I'm proud of what our guys have done up to this point. You know, we've got, you know, we've got um, not enough. We, the time is ticking and we've, we've got, you know, no room for error, uh, but our guys have done a, a, a great job. And I think they're hungry, Trey, I really do. I think they're hungry to uh, be a good football team. And they understand that, you know, we've got to keep our head down. We've got to go to work and we've got to be as close as we can as a team uh, to withstand the, the, you know, from schedule one to 10, what we've got coming.